Mr. Richard Spencer, you're here. Hello, sir. Hey, Ralph. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Well, I had a great Thanksgiving and um, about to get on the road again. And uh, crazy month of October, to put it mildly, but or crazy month of November, <laughs> rather, to put it mildly. But um, yeah, I'm good. Going to survive. Now... <laughs> Let's just address it at the top of the show now, because um, I don't know how much you can talk about it or not. What uh, I had for Thanksgiving? You're talking about, yeah. <laughs> just what did you have on your plate, the Richard? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fact that the Cowboys are kind of sucking right now. That's another like really big issue for me. Yeah. Growing up in Dallas. Yeah. I actually was watching a little bit of the game before we came on. We'll see if they, <laughs> yeah, uh, if they take out the Saints tonight. Um, now, of course, I was referring to the little uh, shindig they had there in Charlottesville, the trial. Um, now, I know you can't talk. Uh, you can't go into specifics. Perhaps it's up to you, whatever you want to say. Of course, I won't stop you. <laughs> But right. uh, you have your own uh, your own interest, though. Of this course, will be used in evidence <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the next I won't stop you if you want to go into it further. But uh, I figured I'd let you talk about it here at the top, and you know I, I can't stop other folks uh, from bringing it up. But we, we'll just let you address it here, and then you can tell them no comment. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll be as objective as possible. I mean, for, first off, I mean, objective objective in the sense that I, I'm not going to say anything that's that might affect anything in the future. But I'll just talk about stuff that is. Oh. You know, in the public domain. Shin Shan two and, five um, six be sent three. Hold on, I, I'll replay this. Let let him get this out, and then I'll replay all the uh, TTS for sure, and and we won't stop any. But I want to let him speak on this clearly at the top. Yeah, I'll talk about stuff that's in the public domain, and I will you know talk about general feelings and things like that. But I I do want to be careful, as you understand. I sure. don't want to, um, because I think we might have to do this again. Um, so I had a fool for a client. I was acting on my own behalf, pro se. Um, I don't regret that actually in the slightest. I learned quite a bit about the legal system uh, for one thing. Uh, secondly, I don't think the outcome indicates that I did a poor job. I went up to bat a number of times in cross-examination I struck out a few times. I grounded out to second a few times. I hit a few singles. So it just was what it was. Um, I don't really think that paying $100,000 to someone to reach the same, uh, same outcome would have been a good idea. But anyway, um, it was fascinating. And I think the other aspect of just representing yourself, you get to speak directly to the jury. And um, so look, the outcome itself, I saw a lot of headlines that were like, you know, uh, neo-Nazis destroyed forever. They owe $25 million yeah. to uh, the plaintiffs. I, and I'm not just saying this, I don't want to spin this and be like, we won or whatever. No, we didn't win. It was a horrible, <laughs> you know, going to trial whether it's divorce, whether it's a civil trial, certainly a criminal trial. I've never been in a criminal trial. Um, it's basically they are looking up your skirt. I mean, you are laid bare and you can't hide anything and people are pointing out uh, your imperfections. And particularly in this trial where we were going up against uh, very powerful law firms and uh, very intelligent people. I mean, they're obviously they're, they don't have my best interest at heart, but they are intelligent and skillful. And the exhibit list that they amassed was tremendous. Uh, but you know, it was what it was. You, you kind of have to be able to face something like that. Now, a lot of, you saw a lot of headlines of like, Oh, you know, neo-Nazis blown apart or whatever. That's not really what happened. So, the big things that the plaintiffs were going after were sections 1985 and 1986 of U.S. Code 4142. It's known as the Ku Klux Klan Act, um, and they the jury was deadlocked on the two big issues uh, for everyone. And I would remind you that one of the aspects of this is that they're charging a, a malign conspiracy, effectively. So they were lumping me in with James Fields, I have never met James Fields or communicated with James Fields in my life. 
Um, they are, you know, Chris Cantwell was there. Jason Kessler is, of course, the chief organizer, all sorts of people. They're lumping us all together. And then all sorts of these, uh, you know, organizations that I had no connection to. Uh, lumping us all together and basically claiming that it was one big thing. Now, they failed in 1984 and 1985, or at least it was deadlocked. So that means that that could be filed again. The complaint could be filed again. Now, in terms of Virginia law, uh, I, they found against me in terms of a conspiracy, which is a, just a very simple concept. They were kind of, you know, I, I certainly agreed to, take part in the Charlottesville rally. Um, I did not agree to take part in any kind of, you know, bad behavior. Uh, they also found against me in terms of um, a, a kind of state law, Virginia state law of, of racial animosity, uh, basically. And um, I, as you can imagine, will contest that in various ways. The plaintiffs, themselves who were also witnesses testified that I did not harm them. And they were certainly given a chance to say otherwise. They either didn't remember me, they didn't recognize me, or in the case of Elizabeth Sines, the chief plaintiff, um, she testified that she saw me, she recognized me, and I did nothing to her. I did not scream at her. I did not address her. I basically, it's it, it kind of embarrassing. I went up to the top of the stairs and tried to give a speech but there was no, there was no, the battery was out right. on the microphone. So I was like, this is an historic victory. And no one was listening. So <laughs> I've uh, seen that happen then, covering these rallies yeah, in real life. Yeah. Yeah. And then she said, I walked off. So um, that is, you know, I'm not going to quite say what I'm going to do. That will be in the public domain afterwards. Sure. But that strikes me as a bit dubious. Um, the next counts involve James Fields. Now, the problem with James Fields is he did not participate in this um, civil action. He, um, I, I think James Fields is in a very bad place from what I understand. Um, and he has pled guilty to criminal charges and it is, there's no, there's no go hope really. Um, so, he, those are the, the last three charges were against him in particular for the car accident. Now, in terms of plaintiffs, again, there, there was, it was a kind of mixed bag. I mean, there were people who were directly injured by James Fields in the car incident um, on August 12th, 2017. I do truly understand their position seeking relief. Um, again, those same people testified that they didn't see me, they didn't recognize me, et cetera. Um, interestingly, um, nothing was awarded to Elizabeth Sines, the first person, the first plaintiff, it's Sines v. Kessler. And um, nothing was awarded also to a uh, rather dubious uh, minister named uh, Wispelway or something like that. So the whole thing is a mixed bag of an outcome and I do think these things are important. I mean, it's not just, you know, for, I mean, it's important to me personally, obviously, but I, I do think it is important. And in, in a way, the plaintiffs have, or the plaintiffs counsel rather, have, have won in the sense that the threat of a lawsuit like this hangs over the head of anyone doing any action like this. These types of lawsuits aren't being used against BLM. I, if you use the logic of the plaintiffs, you could easily make an argument that there are some, you know, Marxist theorist, the, the Richard Spencer of the BLM, who are coming up with all these, you know, ideas and they are inspiring people to go protest. But really that protest is just a, um, an excuse to go loot or riot or, or beat up uh, people left and right. You could make that argument. You could use this as a weapon against really any movement. Now, I think the, the movement they wanted, wanted to use it against was the alt-right of 2017. Uh, they certainly would want to use it against any kind of radical right-wing type movement as just a threat of we are going to put you through hell. And it is hell. It's absolute hell. I mean, you, you know, talk about 
lifting up the kimono, looking up someone's skirt. I mean, uh, if it is a, I do not wish this upon anyone outside of the people who send mean super chats. I do wish it upon them. <laughs> Speaking of mean super <laughs> chats, <laughs> we have a couple here. I'll play them. Um, I'm glad you weighed in very more than I thought actually. And um, I see here, you know, we played a video, um, I guess, and I, you said it wasn't a win, da, 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 but we played a video and a lot of the, the media attention after the verdict was, yeah, Nazi smashed, uh, ruined and never, never again. And all this type of stuff. Right. Uh, and then we watched a, I want to say, I think it was Charlotte, North Carolina, I believe local reporter there, not Charlottesville, uh, but I guess she was at the trial and, um. She gave. She was a legal analyst, and she gave her take on it. And her take was they lost big. Uh, was her take, and was like the only one I saw saying this, by the way. But she went through very thoroughly and explained why she believed that uh, that they had spent twenty five million dollars and all this money or whatever much they spent, uh, and this yeah. is what they got as a result. And it wasn't exactly a resounding victory, though. Uh, it wasn't. They, I mean, when you uh, you know, I don't want to declare victory right. by any yeah. stretch, but at the same time, could you maybe say? Uh, we lost the game, but we were down by three in the fourth quarter. I think that's kind of fair, a moral victory. In terms of the plaintiffs, look, these, uh, look, I, and the plaintiffs' counsel, I mean, look, these guys are going after me, whatever, they hate me, and they, you know, they want to destroy me, maybe. I don't know what's in their hearts and minds. But they are intelligent people. They are highly skilled people. They are at the top of their game. Uh, they could reasonably expect a slam dunk to use another sports metaphor. They could reasonably expect just blowing people away. And in terms of the people who didn't participate, um, they just made everything, they made everything worse for me and the other def defendants who, who did participate, they got dunked on. And, you know, but I, I don't know when you're, when something's this asymmetric and it ends up in a kind of murky situation, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I saw that. I think I tweeted out that report as well. And I thought, yeah, wow, this is someone this is fair. I mean, they raised a hell of a lot of money to set a major precedent. They did not set that precedent. Right. The jury was deadlocked. And that was what it was really all about. Uh, too, like 84 you said, and 85 or 85 and 86. That's the case. And those those were not decided upon. So. All yeah. right. Now, now what about now obviously you have some critics some some people that you would say didn't like you uh as we've seen we knew that already though. But what do you say about um like uh, to that person who said that about about you there? Let me go back to the comment. Um you know, why why would anybody care? They don't like you now. How does it affect them, I guess? You know what I mean? Like what what is the reason to care about this if they don't like you? Uh, if they don't uh, care for Richard Spencer or some of the other defendants, uh, is there something bigger than that? I know you've talked about it already uh, in your first answer, uh, but uh, what would be the reason to care about it if they didn't care about you? Right. You don't. You don't have to care about me. I mean the the fact that this this case. I mean, according to the words of Roberta Kaplan herself, uh, this was about crushing the then, you know, fledgling alt-right movement. Um, it can be used absolutely against you if you want to engage in any form of activism that is public and bold and that is going to attract people. Now, I think that Charlottesville was a disaster on many ways. Um, I don't go out of my way to denounce Charlottesville because I, I find a lot of that stuff to be um, very, very poisonous. And it's a, it's a way it is throwing the baby out with the bathwater. There were good things about that. There were, there were a lot of good intentions. There were good people. Um, and I think just getting into this kind of Charlottesville obsession is absolutely wrong, but there were a lot of bad people and there were a lot of decisions that could have been better on the part of the organizer. Um, and there are also things that were could not have been foreseen, and it, to be fair, so I, I think it's something that I've learned a lot from. Uh, it it has absolutely affected me, and so on. But in terms of the lawsuit, I mean, yeah, you want to like you hate Richard Spencer, so this is all funny, or whatever. Well, I mean that that sounds like a, a really destructive, nihilistic 
attitude. Um, if, if this kind of precedent is set where 1980, sections 1985 and 1986 are just used as this Damocletian sword holding, you know, hanging over everyone's head, um, you're not going to be able to do any form of activism. Maybe you don't want to. Okay, fine. But like, this is absolutely a way of using the court system as politics by other means. You know, it, that is what this is about. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of technical issues. There's there's evidence, there's arguments, et cetera. But like at the end of the day, it is about using the court system as politics by other means. Like I, it seems like some people would care about that. But Well, I definitely do understand uh, not liking somebody enough that you would root for things like that to happen. Uh, but I would say, you know what I mean? Like, there's people I don't like, too. Uh, but uh, I would say yeah. in this case, a little short-sighted, um, especially since they're basically looking for ways to put us all in jail uh, and bankrupt us all, if you want to know the truth about it. Um, and yeah. I know a lot of people don't like what Richard's been saying the last year or two, uh, but it doesn't stop them from trying to fuck with him either, right? You know what I mean? Like, they're still trying to... <laughs> They're still trying to bankrupt him. They're still trying to fuck with him over some right. shit from 2017, right? It doesn't matter um, about any of the stuff he said about Biden or the vax or anything else. They're still fucking with this guy. And if you get in their crosshairs, they're going to fuck with you too uh, for the yeah, rest of your life. Look, my, the Biden stuff, th that was not an attempt to like appeal to the plaintiffs. If it were, it didn't work in the slightest bit. Like I call things as I see them and I march to the beat of my own drummer. I think you recognize that whether you agree with me or not. Um, so it, it's, they will, if they see you as some kind of major threat, they're going to go after you. This case could have very easily been Natalie Romero v. James Fields. That is someone who was clearly injured. Now, Natalie Romero um, was an activist of some kind, kind of a casual one, I would say, but she was absolutely injured in the car incident and she did not deserve to be injured. That is a f absolutely fair statement. That could have been the case. That is a open and shut, completely legitimate, and in a way, a political use of the civil court system. It wasn't that. It was basically an attempt to say that, you know, not only was there James Fields, but, you know, Spencer's bold talk about, you know, this is an historic victory. We're taking the streets and, you know, we're the new right. We're going to take over. That stuff led to her injuries in a kind of malign conspiracy. That is a really dangerous way of arguing. And that can absolutely be used in all sorts of bad ways. Now, let me see. Um, I think there is. Okay, there are a couple. DD12, this one I missed. <laughs> DD12 sent $10. Hopefully the retrial for those two deadlocked charges is immediately dismissed. I wish all the guys in the trial well and hope the monetary liability hasn't affected messed with them mentally too much. Yeah, and I don't want to go full feels or whatever here, but um, it sounds like they really put you guys through the meat grinder. Um, and this is just what we've seen since it's been publicized a lot the last couple of months, you know, while the trial was getting ready to happen and then when it happened and now you're here mm -hmm. after. Um you know, I've been through my own legal stuff and still I am going through some stuff uh, not related to political activism. Uh, but uh, I know how it can wear on you. Uh, let's just put it that way. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's not it's not easy, uh, and especially something like this. that's getting everyday media attention and stuff. They're taking pictures of you outside the court, of course, uh, stuff like that. Like what was what was it like, I guess, from that perspective? Well, it wasn't quite the circus that I expected. So when I first got there, I, I was actually staying um, like an hour outside of Charlottesville because I, I, I kind of prepared for the worst. I thought it was just, you know, you would have to like burst through Antifa to get into the courtroom. And then there's going to be like a replay of Charlottesville and may, maybe future lawsuits. Who knows? It was not like that. Right. It, it was not the media circus that I, I expected. And I think that was good. Um, also the, you know, you could listen into the trial, but you had to kind of actively follow a link. It was a, a bit like the Maxwell trial going on now. It's, it's not really that public. Um, I, I think Charlottesville also is kind of in the rear view mirror, um, to a degree, particularly after January 6th. So that kind of lessened, uh, the burden of it, uh, I guess a little bit, but, um, yeah, but I, again, I, that, that's just to put everything into perspective. I mean, look, 
you you go through the discovery process, you go into court, you go into court up against very tough and smart lawyers who want to defeat you, you know, they're going to dissect you and lay you bare. I mean, it, it's, I, you know, I, if I could brag a little bit, look, weaker people would be crushed by it. They, they just couldn't take it. Normal people, what, what do you fear most? Your, you know, internet search history being published? Well, it wasn't quite that, but it was a lot like that, actually. Uh, your worst moments uh, being amplified in a trial where a jury really decides your fate. It, it is stressful as hell. I mean, it, yeah. Now, what do you, um, what do you think about Kessler? You know, I'm invincible. Because I, I know Kessler. He's been on the show. We actually had him on the show during the trial. Uh, yeah. And um, he had some things to say. So I, I'll let you, if you want to respond or say anything to him. I don't remember exactly what he said. It wasn't flattering towards you, though. And, and made Oh, no. Comments. Kessler clearly hates me. Um, I, you know, I don't know what to say about Kessler. I, my, my view of him... This is the guy who organized the pro the Charlottesville protest, by the way, or is credited with right. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, my my view of him has, has has shifted a lot. I mean, I never really knew him, and I I don't think I could even say who he is. I mean, if someone asked me, what does Jason Kessler believe in? Like, does he have an a, a core view of the world? I, I don't think I could tell you what it is. Um, and I think you know, even my haters, I, I think they would they could probably explain, you know, a little bit how I go about things, like how I think about things, whether they agree with me or not. Um, Kessler uh, was obsessively tweeting during the trial, which is absolutely stupid. And um, he was openly saying, uh, I'm going to have to throw Spencer under the bus in order to beat the rap. I mean, that's a direct quote. Um I, I, I he said you threw him under the to bus be, too, on uh, or something. Try to claim that I forget what the tweet was. I have to go back and pull it up. But he was saying well, his argument. I mean, this is public knowledge, so I, I can I can talk about it. I mean, this happened in the trial. His argument basically was that he wanted a good rally, and all of these terrible people took the rally away from him. And so basically anything that happened that was right. good was Tim. Anything that happened that was bad was Spencer working through Eli Klein is, was effectively what he was claiming. Um, he didn't cite any evidence for this or present this when he had ample opportunity to, he just kind of said it, asserted it. And um, so there are these just kind of very weird situations. Um, one of them was in cross-examination um, with me and I guess with um, Ms. Dunn, who, who cross-examined him, where uh, he would say like, oh, in this photo, this is when the, the rally was taken away from me or so. And it, it's just a very weird thing. It's it, you un, like, like, I don't think I am liable for the injury suffered by some of the plaintiffs. Um, that being said, at some point you do have to take responsibility for something. No, you shouldn't take responsibility for something that's not yours, but you have to take responsibility for what's yours. And you have to try to learn from something and say, well, all right, this doesn't work. That was a good decision. That was a really bad decision. We couldn't have foreseen that, but we now, we now can foresee that you have to treat it like that. If you're treating it simply as I am innocent, I am a good person and an innocent victim, then you can't learn anything and you can't really say anything about the trial. And that is my impression of Kessler. Kessler claimed that from the moment he met me, he knew that I was a narcissistic sociopath <laughs> and just, you know, it's like, well, why are you inviting me to the event? Why did you as was revealed at trial, actively invite the Nationalist Socialist Alliance or the the I forgot what they were called the N something the national the National Front. Why did you actively invite them? Why were you uh, actually walking in with them? Why why did you do that? If that is your view, you, you the evidence is contradicting what you're saying. He said that I was this evil person. Um, as I revealed in cross examination, he invited me to attend his Charlottesville 3.0 rally in 2018. I didn't. And I, 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 I don't know what to say. I, I, I didn't, it, it just wasn't worth it. I didn't trust him and I didn't want to do it. Well, whatever. 
Maybe I was right, maybe I was wrong. Who cares? But after that event, he texted back to me, as was revealed in the trial, eat my dust, you jealous bitch. Well, this this doesn't really seem like someone who wants to work with me or wants has my best interest at heart. This doesn't seem like someone who's really taking responsibility. It seems like someone who's playing a victim. And I mean, another case that was, this never happened. So, and I'm glad that it never happened, but he was talking about finding a Richard Spencer impersonator and (laughs) announcing that to Antifa and they would all meet up at a bar and get in a fight. (laughs) Now that's just bonkers. Now he never did it to his credit, I guess, but uh, you know, it's a, (laughs) it's, it's not good. And I, I think at the end of the day, it's like a Vince McMahon better, idea there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the there, there are better arguments that could be made for that, for, for why he should not be liable and why people should actually care about this case. There are better arguments than, you know, Richard Spencer's evil. I mean, look, I'm, I'm a whipping boy in the alt right. Most of the alt right hates me or whatever. Fine. I don't care. Like I'm not, I, what did they say when they go on the survivor show? I didn't come here to make friends. Um, you know, I'm interested in ideas. I speak my mind. You can take it or leave it. It's up to you, but there are just better arguments that can be made. And to be honest, um, I feel like I didn't fully understand what Charlottesville was really about in the sense that, I had done all of these great events, um, Texas A&M, Auburn, where, you know, no lawsuits emerged from those. Um, Yeah, there were scuffles. Antifa would show up. Antifa is toxic. You know, yes. But things were going well. Um, The innovation that Kessler uh, brought about is their right in the name, Unite the Right. It was about bringing in everyone. And he was, again, he was the point man for bringing in the national socialist movement and Jess Shup and all of these guys. Well, I understand why you would want to do that, you know, more people, but you know, you're, you're, you're changing the nature of what this is, what this is. And again, I was not informed of this stuff. I was not involved in the discord server where the Charlottesville rally was, um, uh, was uh, organized and that was testified to by the plaintiff's own expert. Uh, and so I, I don't know what to say to him on some level. Um, it, it's just, there are better ways of making arguments than trying to demonize someone, particularly when the facts don't back you up, back it up. You know, you, you can't cite any evidence for what he's saying. He's just saying it. And it didn't work. <laughs> so why? You know? All right, there we go. I want to give you a chance. I know he, he brought you up, and I saw him mentioning it, and uh, I'm sure he'll probably come back on at some point, too. Uh, so i like to get that here on the record. <laughs> the kill stream is the record. Somebody was, somebody was fucking with me and sent me an email and said, do you want to you get on the record over here on my shitball channel? No. This is the record right here, the kill stream, uh, and that's, that's what I'm interested in. All right, now let me turn this on. All right, Carl, go ahead. Finish it up. Uh, yeah, um, so I heard that when you're in your trial, you had the, the Milo clip brought up, um, and then you kind of brought it into context. I was wondering if you could share that context with us. Sure. Well, I, I actually presented the Milo clip as an exhibit in my own defense. <laughs> and um, the uh, plaintiffs, kind of, they were like, oh, he's trying to, I forgot what they said, he's... he's um, He's, he's trying to immunize to it, you to it, to the jury. They, they did not like that. But basically, the, the Milo clip, as you probably know, it was the I rule the fucking world and, you know, octoroons. It, it was me at a state of just immense frustration. And it was, you know, obviously should never have been um, put out there. It was taken, was uh, the recorded without my consent and put out there online to harm me and so on. But I did put it into context. That was not me giving a speech, urging others to go harm anyone. It was me at a, at a point of just utter and complete frustration as the event unfolded. So, uh, you know, I went to Charlottesville that morning with tremendous optimism 
I was ready to give a speech. I was ready to, you know, see the crowd and all that kind of stuff. And the uh, state of emergency was called at 12 noon before anyone had given any form of speech. The rally was scuttled before it even got to take place. And we were forced out onto Market Street. Uh, Antifa and the alt-right were expelled together, forced, funneled towards each other. And then chaos was unleashed on Charlottesville. I mean, it was the worst possible way for anyone to, for any um, municipality or state to uh, have a safe event. And uh, I was in a state of just deep frustration. I learned about Heather Heyer's death and I could feel that this was going to be, just have a, I mean, beyond the death itself, it was just gonna have a tremendous impact, terrible impact. Uh, on the movement and my own career and so on. And I was just in a state of complete and utter frustration. And that's why I descended into this bombastic rant from hell. And so, you know, you have to take that in context. I was not urging anyone to engage in violence. I was expressing extreme frustration, much like someone, you know, at halftime when you're losing a game, I was not a great athlete, by the way, but I was in many locker rooms during halftime. And when you're getting your butts kicked, you'll say things that are just totally outrageous and stupid and crazy. But you're just you're venting frustration. And uh, that's what I was doing. I knew that it was a disaster. And so I put it into context, I think, effectively. Um, Now, the other aspect of that is that um, I asked Kessler under oath who did it. And the person who did it, uh, according to Kessler, and I'd heard this rumor, but I had never promoted this rumor because I didn't have evidence. But, I mean, Kessler testified under oath that it was um, a man named Dave Riley, who uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's I Did they testify that? It. So I'd heard that, and I know Dave Riley, uh, and I'm, I, I he's been on the show and so I would say friendly relations with him, but I had heard that on the down, you know, somebody had told me that in messages. I forgot who yeah. said that now. And they said, yeah, Dave Riley recorded that. And I was like, Oh, is that, I, you know, that's what I'd heard. And then, so I guess it was confirmed then. Well, for, I mean, it was, look, we don't know for certain, but, Kessler said well, that. Well, that's what he road. said. So okay, okay, that's what he's pretty close. Tr- tr- right. Okay. I, I've also just heard that a lot myself. I never said that, that publicly too. because yeah. I don't make right. accusations without evidence. Well, plus, it was now, nothing. The, yeah, I just heard it too. It was nothing for me to say, really. Like, well, I don't know. You know, d- does Dave Riley have? Uh, he certainly doesn't have my best interest at heart. But he he seems to me like a complete and utter snake. He was a IE member uh, who was promoting the rally. He took, uh, I think, drone footage of the Torchlight March. He was photographed next to James Fields, by the way, uh, for what that's worth. I mean, uh, it's just a photo. Um, you could, you know, you happen to be in proximity with someone. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. But um, he did that, and then he plays the, uh, what is it, the optics war, the Groiper war. It's like, we, let's destroy Richard Spencer. Well, that sounds like a, a huge snake to me. Like, you're recording something at a intense and vulnerable and, and horrible moment in my life. You're recording me without my consent, not putting it into context, clipping like the worst possible aspect of it, and then releasing that using Milo, I, I mean, who I don't need to go into, as a way of attacking Richard Spencer. Like that, if Antifa did that, I would be like, well, you know, wow, you guys are really, really uh, effective activists. But the fact is, no, a, um, a, a traditionalist Catholic did that. Make of that what you will. Again, you might, hate, will, you might sh- hate me, but uh, I think you probably should. And that's fine if you hate me, but I think you probably should uh, think twice about that. Well, guy. again, he's been on the but show. Good and I'm luck sure- to him and anyone who's watching. I, I think he's running for school board. And he Utah lost barely, Idaho? actually, the school board election. Um, mm, he, yeah. he lost. hate the- to see that. <laughs> I'm but, sure you're um, probably- <laughs> You're broken but up by that. If there are t- any liberal journalists, you know, <laughs> who now know about this fact, I mean, I don't know. They might want to report on it or something. I can tell you're really broken up. All right. Now, <laughs> about his falling short there. All right, White Wolf, do you have anything else? Uh, by the way, I like Dave, <laughs> and I'm sure he'll come back on and, and have his own thing to say about that. Uh, but, yeah, that was um, – Okay. I would be curious. I hope you do have him on. I would be curious why you're making recordings of people without their consent and then 
uh, editing them and selectively releasing them on the internet um, through a according um, to Kessler homosexual. According to Kessler, we don't. According to Kessler, we don't we don't know for well, sure. If he denies it and he has, I had heard that too. He, I'd heard that, and I like that. Denies it and I'm, he I'm sincerely denies it, and and maybe offers some evidence to the contrary or whatever. Okay, fair enough. I mean, nothing's for certain in this world, but when someone says something under oath that confirms a rumor, well, it seems like we're getting close. Uh, but, and we, uh, yeah, well, we, we might as well get him on anyway. Uh, is what is what I figure. So I'll put a note here. I hope you do, and we'll see if he can uh, say something about it. And like I said, I had heard that. Um, still don't know for sure if it's true or not. Um, but yeah, I had heard the same thing. Uh, all right, White Wolf, thank you, man. Appreciate it. There's, mm. It's it's not quite because they want to spur people to go to the casinos, right? Uh, in in uh, Nevada, so it's not quite Anonymous as liberal even as it is here Mosley in Virginia. Mosley made the recording and sent it to several people. He then conveniently lost his phone and never complied with subpoenas. That's what somebody said. Oh, there. so Mosley made the recording is what Basement is being was claimed sent here. $3. Yeah, that's what was just claimed. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not, old Dave is off the hook. I had not heard that. Uh, and again, I would not put it. Fucking bass. Who that knows guy. who? Yeah, I was gonna say like I don't. I, that's why I, mean, I he's say a, obviously a pathological liar. Well, I that's, mean, he lied to everyone about his uh, valor. To be frank, I mean, in, in, in a way that you didn't need to. I mean, it's one thing if you actually have a military experience, great. But you don't need to impress me by that. I mean, I don't look down upon someone who wasn't in the military or something, and. Um, he lied about a lot of things. I mean, I, a lot of that came out in the trial. Just this, he would just make, um, Cantwell actually played a lot of these um, videos. I was not involved in them at all, so they, they didn't affect me, but they affected Chris. And he would play these videos where he was talking about, oh, yeah, we talked to the police and we did this. And the, he, he didn't talk to the police. And he, they're, they're going to get tough on Antifa when we do this. All of this was just bullshit. bullshit. It was this, this weird... Uh, kind of sociopathic lying. Um, and I, I don't know it, 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 I would say this, I mean, I, and I, I think I said this to a degree in the trial. I mean, it, it really does concern me that I was just surrounded by a bunch of weird liars and they're pathological liars in the sense that it's one thing to like embezzle money from your company or like be a con artist or something. It's another thing to lie when you don't have to, you know, I mean, there, I think there was a joke about Bill Clinton uh, when he was a governor of Arkansas that he'll lie when the truth will do, you know, you don't have to lie. Just tell us the truth so that this can be effective. But, but he couldn't do that. And that strikes me as a pathology and not like, an evil Machiavellian scheme. And the, the fact that the alt-right attracted these people and that these people would kind of promote themselves and place the crown on their own head. So they just come out of the woodwork and say, ah, oh, I'm the new logistics coordinator. I'm going to do this. I'm going to you know, do that. Well, that was a really bad chaotic situation that should never, ever be repeated. And I have definitely learned that lesson. All right, now, um, and for those who don't know, Mosley, was it Eli Mosley, I think? Yes. Um, and, Eli and, Klein is, Elliot Klein is his actual name. Elliot Klein is his name? Mm -hmm. All right. Correct. Well. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, who knows? Maybe he's lying about that, too. But um, That seems a little... Yeah. He, he didn't. No, it's it's not. A, I know. I'm just fucking with Jewish you. But, but, but you went there. Yeah, <laughs> I went there. I had to. But, um, but but he was caught he, out lying lying by the New York Times. Actually, he sat for a fucking interview, I believe, with the New York Times or mainstream. Yeah, and, and we covered it on the kill stream at the time. I remember it's 2018, uh, and we never had him on the show or anything. But he just completely um, self immolated. Basically, they called him out and called out his f well, stolen valor. It's unsustainable. You can't. You know, I, I'm. I'm not defending lying here, but it's like, it's one thing to like lie in your taxes. <laughs> it's another thing to just endlessly lie about everything. It's, it, it can't work. You're going to, you're, you're just like treading water and slowly sinking under. You're going to drown. You can't lie about literally everything to everyone for no reason. It, it's just going to implode eventually. So it's kind of like, 
there's a real problem about having people with these types of pathologies, these borderline personality disorders and sociopathy surrounding everyone and taking the lead at, you know, in, in rallies and stuff like that. Like that is just totally unworkable. Um, it's just, it's scary. No, I don't know. But yeah, he did not comply with discovery, which just means that you're going to get fucked. I think he was in jail at some point and you know, yeah, believe it or not, you have to comply with shit to some degree or else you're just in default. And you know, you, you, you can maybe do that in some circumstances, but like there's going to be a consequence. And I, I just feel like he never felt like there was any consequence. Another, I mean, in my opinion, and I actually said this, uh, under oath at, at trial, uh, I think Samantha Frillick is a liar. I don't think she's reformed. Now that's the person. Whatever. Now, by the way, is that the person Kessler came on here and, and he again he came on here and alleged that you had a relationship with her? If that's the one I'm thinking about. Oh yeah, uh, I slept with her. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> I slept with her hours after I met her. I mean, um, so I never had a relationship with her that was of any seriousness, <laughs> but. Um, she, yeah, she was just a kind of clearly ambitious girl. And, um, I wouldn't say that by the way, if it, if that was actually in trial, that was in her deposition. So that's why I'm saying it. I don't kiss and tell in other circumstances. I see but, some other things being mentioned in chat. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard some other things too, but anyway, well, go ahead. but you know, who was she? What did she actually, she totally mischaracterized me in her deposition. So it wasn't testimony. I had no opportunity to cross examine her. So she totally mischaracterized me um, and other things. She's now like part of some grift operation, like anti-racist activist group. So I, I, you know, I'm not certain about those things. That's just my gut feeling. I don't think she believes in anything. I just think she's just, she's just like a, she, a, you know, little dragonfly that goes about, here, there yeah, and yeah. everywhere. Yeah. You know, did she, was she ever a white nationalist? I think that's a better question. Uh, and she <clears> was, uh, she works with, we talked about this uh, with him too, actually. I guess she works with one of these reformed, these guys who um, bring people back from hate or whatever. Yeah. And look, if, if that's what your deal is, like, f- fair enough. Okay. But that organization, I've even heard this from a lot of other people. That organization is really dubious and just seems like a grift. And yeah. so I, I don't buy any of it. I don't, I don't, I don't buy reformation. I don't think there's any there, there to begin with. She was probably like a similar to Eli Klein, just a, a liar. Yeah. Plus it's there's like some, some people in this world. I mean, what is it? One in 30 are sociopathic. I mean, it's like, there are people in this world that don't have a core being to them. There is no there there. And they will say what you, they think you want to hear. And that is scary as fucking hell that those people are out there. Uh, you, you mentioned something earlier. Somebody asked you a question uh, in the super chat about Mike Enoch being released from the case or dismissed with, or whatever, having his dismissal granted. Yeah. Um, and you said that the arguments he used in that dismissal, they weren't. Did the judge use? Yeah. Oh, did the judge used? Well, uh, the arguments, many of the arguments that were used and I used as well. I literally copied them from another source. And so did Mike. So, yeah. But um, in terms of the argument, the the justification that was used by the judge, it seemed to be, it, it, it always struck me as weird. I mean, this is like three or four years ago, so I don't even quite remember it. It just struck me as weird in the sense that it could have been applied to more people, including the League of the South. Were you, did you ever use a, um, like a, a lawyer during that time? Yeah, I used Danucci after that, and in terms of the, um, uh, in terms of, I, I won't go into further. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to push you say anything wrong or anything. Yeah. But um. Wait one second. Okay. Bog V sent three dollars. Nick the Knight versus Richard the Fed. All right, Bog. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, I guess I was just kind of looking for some specificity as to like what uh why you think that you know like what you were implying basically like why why do you think 
that they let him off and not you. But then secondly, I kind of want to ask, did you look at, did you file as many motions as he did? Were no, you, he as, filed a lot more motions. So do you think they let him off because he was being a pain in the ass? Um, I mean, well, if you're asking my opinion, it, it seems to me like he had a, he did have something that he wrote in his arguments that most people did, or none of the rest of them did, which, because they were trying to subpoena his, his, uh, the docs of his listener base. And, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, made a very, very good argument against that. And he tied that into throwing the whole thing out. And that is unique among the defendants. And um, I, I think enough. that's why I got tossed my, personally. Fair enough. But yeah, I don't know. I wasn't implying anything outside of, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it, it's just, there's so much about this case that is very curious. And I, to be honest, I think it should have been thrown out for, most everyone. I mean, again, yeah. the, there is a legitimate, like, you know, James, it, it wasn't like this, I guess, in 2017 or 2018. But I mean, when James Fields has pled guilty to crimes, then, you know, if the case were Natalie Romero v. James Fields, th that is a open and shut civil case. Uh, but again, th I, I just feel that a serious magistrate judge would have taken different actions. I mean, it would have just kind of seen through what this was. The amount of just assertions of a literally in, in the original complaint of a criminal conspiracy and all of this kind of stuff, just the, the level of hyperbole was over the top. And it just, it, we knew what this was about from the beginning. Now, once they got in the courtroom, of course, it, it wasn't just over the top nonsense. I mean, these are very good lawyers and know what they're doing. But if you go back to that original case, I mean, it, I, I think a serious judge should just say, look, this is absolutely outrageous. You can't just make bold assertions and treat that as fact. No, yeah, you don't have to try to convince me that this lawsuit was bullshit. Of course it was. Yeah. Uh, I will. Yeah. I wanted to say this, too. I forgot about this. Now, I was listening to that case on the phone, like, for a lot of that week. By the way, um, Dingo, keep talking. I'm going to step away for one second, and I'll come back. We'll finish up the college. We'll do the musical number. An amazing okay. episode tonight, I have to say. Richard going the long haul. It's been a lot of fun. Go ahead, Dingo. I'll let you carry it here for a second while I step away. Yeah. All right? Okay, I can do that. All right, cool. I'll, I'll bill you for it. Um, no, but... uh. Now that Ralph's gone, somebody in the chat was like, "Oh, Dingo sucking Spencer's cock." Yeah, you, you, your, your fucking people can be so irrational. Like, how many mm -hmm. times have I gotten on here and argued with this dude already? Like, plenty. You know what I mean? Like, he just hasn't said anything that's super fucking insulted me. I'm not like all horny to fucking <laughs> debunk his vaccine opinions like you guys are. Okay, I'm sorry. If he says something I don't like, I'll call him an asshole. But I mean, I just don't know what you want from me all the time. But anyways, Richard. Well, what the fuck was I going to say? I got mad at that asshole in chat. I can't remember. Oh, you were yeah. saying something about the trial. Yeah, I called in and I was listening to the trial mm -hmm. uh, a lot that week. And one part I was lucky enough to catch, and I don't think that you meant to make this hilarious, but you did. <laughs> you mentioned it earlier how you played your Octoroon call. Mm -hmm. So you played the entire thing for the jury, and then you said, like, I'm going to play it again. I'm not I know you've heard it already, but mm -hmm. I just want to play it for context or whatever. And so as soon as it got done, I mean, you were yelling like a maniac. We all yeah. know what it sounds like. You said, now let me just add some context to this. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the best part of the whole fucking thing for me because, like, there's just, just not a great time to add context to it whenever the last word you said was like Octoroon or some shit. Yeah. It was the well, funniest you, part of the trial. There's one thing that you, you, you can't run away from stuff. You know, like if I, I, I think it would look really bad if I said something that might have a little bit of plausibility, which is that you can't prove that's me or whatever. No, you can't, but you know, and I didn't obviously remember exactly what I said, but you know, it, that's, that's clearly my voice and it is what it is. You, you just, you, you have to face it. You can't get in this like mountain of lies that you're telling where you're just avoiding uh, the truth. It doesn't work. A jury doesn't buy it. They'll nail you on it. And you're, you become an incredible witness. 
Yeah, that was just funny though. I, I wish we could. I wish I had recorded it or something. Well, there were worse great. moments than that. I mean, the the plaintiffs they were putting up these exhibits. I mean, you guys can again. I'm 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 talking about the trial objectively. That is stuff that's in the public record. I mean, the amount of just unbelievably horrible shit posting and just nonsense and stuff also that was just kind of gross and disturbing and awful to be honest did the amount just the heaps of this trash that they were just piling up in the courtroom i mean at some point it, it did just kind of become absurd you know what's what's the next thing there what's the latest inward meme that they're gonna <laughs> throw up on a big screen in front of the jury it just it just got i don't think it was i don't know i don't even know if it was strategically effective um, yeah, the there was it, some, it just, rat, some crazy stuff in there. Like, uh, oh, my oh which, God. Did, did you post a meme with the text on the picture saying, I'd like to go balls deep in Loomer's fart box? And some shit like that. <laughs> and they would just read this stuff out loud, and it's insane. That, that's oh not a quote. God. Was that but, posted? You know, really I was going to say, went home. Uh, that right. might as well have been in the evidence list. I mean, yeah, it, it was just a total disaster. It's very descriptive there. All right, now, um, let me. I've seen that meme before. Now. <laughs> For the record, I would not. Like to know. <laughs> $15, Dingo. Do a show, please. You lazy faggot. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.